All right, so to document three, we're going to pick up right where video two left off. Um, so we have document three. Ndanzi Kumalo, an African veteran of the Ndavali Rebellion against British advances. Um, so this document is interesting because what you have going on here, to me at least, in the first half of the document, uh, we surrendered to the white people, we went home to our lives, they said to go live them uh, as we normally would, tend to our crops, but, so the British probably promised them, like, hey, we're just here, like document one said, we're here to improve your country, right? So this is probably what was said. So the British, so here's, a, here's where you got to find those little connections to document one. The promise of improvement. Sorry. Writing with my finger is abysmal. All right, well, here's what happens when you believe the British. We were treated like slaves. They came were overbearing. We were ordered to carry their clothes and bundles. They harmed our wives and daughters. So there's some kind of... Um, you know, obviously there's some sexual violence going on here against women, which is a recurring theme throughout history when one group dominates another. Um, unfortunately, women um, are become victims of rape as, as a way of showing dominance um, over the other people. Um, but then it says, how the rebellion started, I don't know. The white man fought us with big mach guns, machine guns, and rifles. Many of our people were killed in the fight. I saw four of my cousins shot. We made charges, but each time we were defeated because the white men's machine gun. So this is interesting because this first part, clearly the, the Africans, um, at least let's see, the, in, let's not call them Africans, the indebly, um, In a group complied with, let's not say European either because this is British, with British demands at first, but then actively resisted with by, uh, forget about grammar for now, by fighting. But then include the second part. However, the British had, and this is one of the key um, key concepts to know, is that the Industrial Revolution led to a superior military technology in Europe. And easily subdued the rebellion. So this one, again, now that we're in the third document, you got to start asking yourself, well, how does this connect with previous documents? Document one, um, I guess it does have a, uh, a connection, connects with the compliance part of document one, uh, especially the first half. Uh, document two, does it connect? Not really. Document two says it has this political no thank you. Um, and then, so there was no compliance there. They said, stay out of our country. And then with, then we're here and we have a new, um, form of resistance, which is, um, actually using, uh, violence or some form of revolt as a form of resistance. All right. So let's see if those ideas pop up again. Document four. All right, the Ashanti again. So we got the Ashanti. This is a queen, and she's speaking to chiefs. So she's, uh, you know, flipping the roles of patriarchy, uh, patriarchy, and matriarchy around on us. Um, I've seen that some of you fear to go forward and fight for our, our king. So in this speech, the the queen mother says uh, she's clearly addressing a group of males. And it says, um, you know, she brings up the, the good old days. In days past, um, no one would have gotten away with this. No white man could would have dared speak to the chiefs of the Ashanti in this way. So you could read the rest of this document. Um, but the key part is here, she says, if the men aren't going to go fight, the women will. 
So there's two cool things here going on is that um, Ya Asantewa Asantewa is shaming the males for refusing to fight. So that is similar to document, this is very similar to document three. We have um, the men are complying with the Europeans and letting them get away with stuff. Um, but the queen is suggesting and encouraging a revolt. So she is actively encouraging physical a violent response. Okay, so we have some connections being made. Document five. We have Samuel uh, Maharero, a leader of the Herero people, and he's writing a letter to an African leader. Letters are always good for hipping, even though we're not doing hipping in these documents because they have a clear audience, and usually they are are good for purpose. So whenever you see letter, that should be if you're someone that is trying hip, um, the type of document always lends itself uh, easily to parts of hip. Uh, all of our obedience and patience with the Germans is to little avail. So here again, we common, a common theme. They start off passive, and then over time, it changed to physical resistance. So we have this example of uh, compliance. I don't know, like passive resistance is that kind of an oxymoron. Compliance with the Germans at first. Each day they shoot us. Uh, this is exactly like... This document, I mean, look at look how similar this is to document three. Uh, we were told to go home. We were trying to live like normal. And then what happened? Uh, each day they shoot us for no reason at all. I appeal to you, brother, do not hold aloof, which means don't try to pretend you're not part of this. Uh, from the uprising, make your voice heard so that all of Africa may take up arms against the Germans. Let us die fighting. I have very, very similar. Compliance with Germans at first, but um, due to... Uh, German oppression of the Herero people, and I'm just making this up, it's not the best. He is trying to gain, uh, instead of saying he, because I always tell my students don't use he, Samuel Ma Herero is, uh, let's see, trying to gain support for a united revolt. So again, we have this idea that this uh, that's changing over time, which is another one of our historical thinking skills, that after so long of oppression that, um, the, that the Africans are planning revolts, okay? Uh, now, at this point in time, we don't know if there actually was a battle or not, but um, the least are encouraging it. That gets to document six, an African chief describing a battle. So if you're in a battle, there's definitely resistance going on against British and African mercenaries. Now, here's what's interesting here is um, that means the British had enlisted Africans to fight other Africans. So if you're going to do historical context or try to pull in outside evidence, I don't know if this is too far of a stretch, but you know, similar situation with the African slave trade is that the Europeans relied on Africans to capture other Africans on the interior and sell them to the Europeans at the coast. So history repeats itself. So it says the long sticks bat fire, pieces of iron whistle past us. They're talking about bullets uh, fell in, uh, around us, fell into the water with a hissing sound, and our brothers continue to fall. So we're probably hearing machine gun fire whiz past. That's probably what he's describing. Which, again, this is where your brain's got to go, oh man, that's a clear connection back to document, was it document two that has the machine guns? So you have that connection with the military superiority of the Europeans with the machine guns. Uh, we ran into our villages, they ran after us. We fled into the forest and flung ourselves on the ground. When we returned that evening, our eyes beheld fearful things. You call us wicked men, but white men, you are more wicked. Um, you think because you have guns, you can take away possessions. You have sickness in your heads, for this is not justice. So 
Um, clearly, in this particular case, this is a the um, told to a German Catholic. Now, again, if you're going to be doing hipping and we're not, this is an important piece of information here because they're giving you the audience who is a missionary, right, a Christian, a religious person. So this particular document could be trying to gain sympathy with the Catholic Church, so maybe that the Catholic Church will do something about this. So this could be a plea for help to the Pope or to the Catholics in general, showing them that you are being hypocrites. You preach about Jesus and, you know, peace and love your neighbor and look what you're doing. So that would be a good one maybe for um, purpose or audience right here. Uh, sorry, without my colors. Purpose or audience. Uh, but really, if this to connect this to the prompt, we have uh, an example of Africans uh, in this battle. Africans resisted with violence. Superior German um, military technology easily subdued them once again. Another common theme that we've seen, and that's what you want. You want to be finding similarities. If not, there's something wrong. All right, last document is an image. You're always going to get at least one image, um, whether it's a map, a chart, or a picture. Um, but there's always there's always seven documents and one of them is always going to be a picture and so here we have uh, African college students posing for um, uh, a photo with European flags at Tuskegee Institute which is in Alabama uh, and it is awarded by a Christian missionary organization so we have here assumingly that these Africans probably from upper class families in Africa uh, another example of Compliance, I guess if you want to call it that, or assimilation, which is a form of compliance um, with Europeans. Okay, so this one, there's not a lot you can talk about. You have the British flag in front. Um, it's interesting, there is a woman here in front. There's another woman, a few women, but mostly it is black Africans that were promised education in America, um, and who knows what their families received in exchange. Maybe they were... And this is where you can make the connection of the argument. Maybe they were the families um, of the chiefs that made agreements in document one. I mean, we don't know, but this is where you have to make the argument um, through in your writing that that is a possibility. And you're allowed to take those liberties uh, and craft an argument, even if you don't know exactly it's true. This That's where just being a good BS writer comes into play. Um, so this has a clear connection with document one. And so now, really, with this particular DBQ, and you know, because this was a real DBQ given um, in 2000, I don't remember the year, 2008, 2009. So these are my quick buckets. So you got to kind of group the documents together. Um, typically, we try to maybe say for three groups, but typically two will give you a decent thesis. So if you're looking at the African responses, if you went back and looked at all the documents, you would notice that there's really two big groups. There was rebellion and resistance through violence and there was compliance and really you just dump the, the documents into the group so like document seven is compliance um, you got document six there was an attempt at violence um, what do we got here um, ugh. documents five um, now this is where those the documents can get interesting because you could put them into both so like five is rebellion and compliance and you could talk about how it changed over time which would probably be a really good thing to do because it's a historical thinking skill it could be one of your arguments that there was compliance at first however it changed over time to outright rebellion, which would be a good way to lead into your paragraph on rebellion. So then these, you can finish grouping the documents, but that's right on time. These become your body paragraphs. 